Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today, we are making a silverware organizer specifically fit for my silverware in my drawer. So let's dive in and have a little bit of fun with this one. So a couple years ago, I redid our kitchen and I did a video about making a silverware drawer organizer. Uh, however, we added an island and I had a bigger drawer. And I wanted to do this because we got a lot more silverware having five people in the house. Um, and so I got these trays that fit in here perfectly. And I really like that, except for there's like two inches of slop that really annoys me how they move up to the top. And on top of that, they're not quite deep enough. So our silverware tends to just pile on top of this rather than be organized. So today I actually want to make an organizer that uses the maximum amount of space all the way around this that is set up for all of our silverware. And this is going to be fun. Let's dive in. Ooh. Okay, yeah, here's the silverware. And we're going to be putting this into the drawer to try and figure out how big do we want this. I want it to have six slots, two spoons, two knives, two forks for different types of each. I want to find where is the tallest utensil and then uh, make the drawer a little bit taller than that. And so that way there's um, enough space for any expansion I might have. So I'm just going to put that on there and make a mark. Yeah, right there. I don't know what that length is. I don't care what that length is. I just want it to be that length on that one. So I need to cut five of these um, so they can be spacers in between all six of the different slots. So I'll mark across and then cut it. Um, I could do this in the bench hook. I know a lot of people much prefer to do it in the bench hook, um, but I find it's just easier to do it freehand. Once I have one of them cut, I'm going to use that as the pattern and mark all the rest to that. That way, if there's any variance in the first one, then it really doesn't matter. Um, as long as all of them are cut and marked at the exact same length as the first one, they should all line up pretty close. Um, and they were, but we'll end up shooting them and making them all exactly the same. Not that it really matters that much, as you'll see a little bit later. So once we get all of these cut, I'm going to stack them all up in one place and then shoot them all so that they are all flush and clean. And that way I know that they are all exactly where I want. Now, these are going to be slightly taller than they need to be. At three and a half inches, it's hard to get your fingers down in between them in the slots. So I want to create a finger indent where there's enough space so you can actually get your finger all the way down to the bottom of the tray. So to do that, I'm going to clamp them all up together and make a, a scoop out of the middle. I have an inch and a half auger bit. This is a wood owl auger bit um, that you've seen me talk about in some of my other videos. If you put a ring on there, it allows you to know that it is level. So if you are too far up or too far down, it will tell you. Um, it's very easy to see left or right, but it's hard to see up and down, and the ring will, will help you with that. So um, yeah, I had to move it. They were starting to, to split out, so I rotated in the vise so that it will clamp it together so they won't uh, split out with that heavy lead screw. I'm going to go until the lead screw just pokes out the other side, turn it around, and then come back the other way. Uh, there's a little bit of blowout from this as I, uh, uh, I, I scratched it on the way out, but oh well. We're going to be removing most of that anyways. Um, we're going to be drawing a line down tangent to one of the sides. Uh, and I didn't make any particular angle on this. It really doesn't matter. And they're not even uh, the same from one to the other. Having a little bit organic because the hole is slightly off center because silverware aren't center from one end to the other. And then we can just cut down until we meet up with that line, trying to make it as accurate as we can, but if anything, staying away from the line a little bit so we'll have some space uh, just to come back and clean it up. And I'm just going to go until the teeth poke out like that, happiness, and then we can turn around and cut from the other side. Now this is going to leave a lot of a mess on the inside. Uh, it's not going to be uh, really nice and clean because uh, you're cross-cutting and uh, you're not going to meet the hole exactly in the same place. So I'm actually going to, uh, to well, this one I'm actually, I was a little bit off, so I decided rather than continuing the cut, I'm just going to break it off. And I'm going to grab a uh, rasp and file and remove most of the material with that. And this will allow me to get a really nice even transition from the straight section down to the rounded section and uh, give a really clean surface. And all of these will be exactly the same. You can see this whole time I've kept the clamps on either one, I'm holding them in place, making sure they're exact. Once that's done, we can come in with the bow sander, break the edges, and clean them up just a little bit so that uh, when your fingers run across it, they're not going to get splinters. And let's see how this goes. Is there enough space so I can actually get my fingers down in between them? And yes, they're the way I like them. Now I'm going to keep them in order uh, because I need to make a uh, board to go across the top for them to stop into. And I'm actually going to make several dados running across this for the each of those last boards to then sit into. So first thing I need to do is mark how wide it needs to be so I can mark it off of reality. 
cut that to length just like I cut the rest, and then figure out uh, what is the spacing I want on these. And once I have that spacing, then we can uh, we can play with laying it out. Uh, I ended up cutting um, two of these. Uh, actually, I cut three of these because we want to make spacers that go in the back. And because these actually stick up a little bit higher than the old drawer sides, I'm going to round over the corners and uh, make those uh, just look a little bit better because these are actually a little higher than the, the drawer sides. So for laying out, I want two of these. Uh, one of them will be at the front of the drawer and one will be at the back of the, all of these slots that I'm creating. And I'm going to use the actual boards to set out the width. So I'm putting one mark of where I want it to be. I don't know where it is. I don't care where it is. I'm just going to set it on the mark, then come over from the other side, and then mark the opposite side of that individual board. I'm going to do this with each individual one so I have this slot cut to precisely the same width as that particular board it's going into. Once I have one side marked, then we can transfer the lines to the other board, and that way the slots will match up from the front of the drawer to the back of the drawer. Now, to cut the dados out, I was looking at a bunch of different ways, and I was thinking about using my router plane, but the, the slots are actually ever so slightly thinner than a quarter inch, and my router plane, the smallest plate I have is a quarter inch. So we're going to cut either side down, and then just come in with a chisel and pare it out. For some of it, we'll come in with a bevel up. It, it's a little bit easier to run along it, and some of it's easier for bevel down. Um, on one of these slots, apparently I mismarked it, and I had to come in and widen it out a little bit but it's pretty easy to then clean up like that. And with a chisel, it goes really, really quickly until this will just wiggle down in and make it nice and tight. I need to take a little bit wider than that. Then we can continue the process, repeat one, and run on over the other one. That stabbing motion is a great motion to learn. It allows you to plane with a chisel, and you can do it bevel down, and you don't need a router plane to do it. Uh, it's a, 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 great, uh, a great skill to learn. Bevel down and with that stabbing back and forth, you get a lot of control with it uh, without blowing out the other side so you can stop just shy of running out the other side. And this is, this is one of these steps that I find to be incredibly fun. Uh, it's just a, a simple, easy thing to do and get a really clean and nice result. Uh, without a router plane, make sure all these fit in and slide nicely. Close yeah, enough. that's what I'm looking for. Good. So we're going to be cutting the grooves on both of these because they match. One on the front of the drawer and one on the back of the drawer. Um, and in the end, I, I cut them all about an eighth inch deep. Actually, it was a little bit less than an eighth inch deep. And I decided to actually change uh, the one on the front of the drawer um, to, excuse me, the one on the back of the drawer to make it a little bit deeper, so it's slightly over an eighth inch deep. And then eventually the one on the front of the drawer, I ended up cutting all of these segments apart um, rather than uh, having them notch into the board, and that way there's a, a full slot uh, fitting into it. But you can see how these will all then fit into the slots and then lock into place so that all the silverware can go in. And so, so far we're not using any glue. Um, they're all just being held in place. I'm actually going to create spacers to go from that back block all the way to the back of the drawer and then put in one other um, slot separation in there so that I can put in serving utensils and other things like that in the back. Now for the ones on the side, I need to actually rip them down uh, because the sides of the drawer are only three inches tall and the pieces I'm working with are three and a half inches tall uh, by quarter inch. And so we need to plane them down a little, uh, um, cut them down, and then plane them down nice and smooth. And these will actually go on the sides of the drawers, separating all of these dividers to keep them at the same distance front to back. So I decided to go ahead and rip them all down to the right thickness, and then I can cut them all to length. And so on the first one, I'm just making a random cut. I want it to be about that far from that divider to the next one. And then I can use that one to measure to the actual um, and use it as the pattern for the other one. Oh, we were talking about this earlier. Um, these nice. uh, separators, rather than having grooves tight on the front, fit. I just decided to cut them all really, apart really um, at there that groove up. line that I created, and this hey, creates little separations. It was a little fiddly to get them in place, but it worked out pretty well. And here's going along and cutting those grooves a little bit deeper on the, the back one, um, just to make them fit in a little bit better. So here we can use reality to mark how long this last divider needs to be. Uh, this goes from the, the last divider to the back of the drawer, um, keeping pressure on all that, holding them into place. And we want to mark that off and transfer it to the other one so we can make sure both of these are exactly the same. Uh, and that way we know that they will, they will fit. <laughs> uh, it's better to do that than a tape measure because a tape measure always enters a, a certain amount of um, irregularity to it because uh, there's a thickness to the line on the tape measure. Uh, so each board will be slightly different. And then this one, I had to cut one extra one to rib it, rib it, rib it, rib it into place. 
So for the, the dividers that go on the side, I'm actually going to use a little bit of super glue and then spray the side with activator, clamp it in place, and it's in place. And this way, um, all that is being glued in are the dividers that then touch the outside faces. Um, everything else is just locked in by friction. So there's two dividers in the back, um, and those are separated by the, the dividers on the side. I really need to come up with better names so those than just dividers for everything, because it's all dividing different things. You can see how it all pops into place. Um, there are um, separators in between the dividers at the front, and then two nice. more dividers to the back, so I can put in um, skewers and serving utensils and other things like that. And everything Go is on, right set up the way I want it, and tall enough that it all fits in. For a finish on this, um, normally I would use boiled linseed oil, um, but I had a bunch of the, the feed and wax left over, and I thought, let's just go ahead and use it on this. Uh, it's a good one, and I like it for that. So I can pull out all the pieces that aren't glued in place. Uh, it's kind of the nice thing about this, this design is if you want to, you can take things out, change them around, and, and change the size. Um, nothing is really locked in because those uh, back dividers are... Um, on the sides. So, but the nice thing about the feed and wax is you can put it on, let it polymerize, and then it's done. Um, you really don't have to do too much to it. Uh, with the silverware drawer, I really don't need it to be incredibly durable because it's going to get banged up and oh well. So, we can put in the side-to-side the -side dividers in the back, and then we can start fitting in all of the main dividers as they slide down into place, locked in the, the groove front and back. And then you can see how all the silverware then goes in and fits in place. Everything has a slot and everything fits in. Uh, it, it's kind of nice because we have a lot of silverware and to have it all in one rather than pouring over into other Pushing slots, that. this is this is fantastic. Yeah. This is exactly what I want. So if you want to see the old video, yeah, I have it on doing have. it with a smaller door. Okay. Now that we have the bigger drawer on the island here, it uh, makes it a lot easier for this. Yay, fun project and I uh, hope my wife likes it. But uh, yeah, there's my silverware driver, divider. Lots of fun. Looking forward to using it for many years to come. So there you have it. All of the silverware exactly where I need it. It is deep enough that all of the silverware fits in without spilling over into the next one. I, it all fits in here and it's just, it's exactly what I want. Rather than having two of these stacked on top of each other or having a second drawer, it is all condensed and fit in very well. Now, if you'd like to see it, I actually did this project once before on a smaller drawer before we put the island into our kitchen. And now that we have the space for it, we have these full size. So this has been, this is, yeah. <laughs> We're really looking forward to using this because there are a few things that you use in life as much as your silverware drawer. Or at least for me. <laughs> so I hope you like this video. So if you like that, hop into the comments down below and let's have some fun. So I do also want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel, everyone who's clicked that join button. Uh, without you, this channel wouldn't exist. We are primarily supported by patrons and uh, members on the channel. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube, or you can go down in the description below and become a patron on Patreon. There are several extras and other things like that that aren't included on the main channel. So thank you for supporting the channel. And also, if you do ever meet anyone who's scrolling over the side, tell them thank you. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. I bet half of you were thinking I didn't actually have silverware. Instead, I had white oakware. <laughs>